today we're coming at you from our farrowing house. We're going to be talking to Bradley and he's going to show us some different um, utensils and things that you need to have uh, when it comes time for you to farrow, along with kind of how we, what we do in our farrowing house. So in the farrowing house when we go to process the layers, we use uh, two different uh, syringes, one for the iron and one for the antibiotic. Uh, we do multiple litters at a time, so we like to use the repeater syringes. Uh, that way we can give them multiple shots without reloading the, the gun every time. Uh, we also have ourselves on our tray that we put on top of the farrowing crate. Um, we just have a little plastic garden base container um, that we have our ear notchers on and our uh, tail nippers on. And then we use a chlorhexidine solution um, to get those in to help sterilize and maintain each pig in the process. When it comes time for the actual farrowing of the pig, we have different things that we use to help with the assisting of the farrowing. Um, we have our OB gloves, the uh, shoulder link gloves. Um, we have the regular latex gloves um, just to help handle the placenta and the afterbirth. Um, and then we use uh, chlorhexidine lube. Um, any lube that you get is fine, but we like to use the chlorhexidine. That way it has the uh, disinfectant in it. Um, and then we also have the forceps. Um, when needed to, when you're sleeping one, you can't get it out. We like to use these forceps to help pull the baby pigs out. Uh, and then once the baby is out, we have these, uh, it's a newer thing that we get from our vet. Uh, it's a suction cup, and then we can adjust the baby pig real quick. So when it comes out and it's still got all the afterbirth uh, and the mucus in its nostrils and has a hard time, you know, getting the first good breath, you squeeze the plunger and you stick the pig's mouth in here and then you let go of the plunger when it's still on there and it'll help suck all of that mucus out of the baby pigs. So in our farrowing system we have here, we have uh, wires hung up behind the crates and then the sow card is behind each one of them. Um, we get these, they get their breeding cards turned into farrowing cards here um, when they get loaded into the farrowing house. And then on this paper, it tells us all the information we need to know about the litters. Um, this sow does not have a tag in her ear, so it's a no tag. Her ear notch is 6-15. Um, she farrowed on 1-8. She's a crossbred, and it's litter number 21. Um, and then we have extra information here that we use um, to keep track of different pigs and to uh, use for our computer system that we keep records of later in the, in the process up in the office. So we have our number born alive, stillborn, mummified pigs, males and females, then a list of each pig, and then we write down their underlines when we're processing them, and then um, notes about each pig for if we have to transfer it off or to foster it, and then a list over here, if this one had a short litter and another sow had a lot of them, we'll take pigs from that one and put on this litter for a fostering. And then um, we give the iron and the exceed at, um, when we process them at um, 24 to 48 hours of birth, after birth, and then they get a mark here, and then after they get picked up at 7 to 10 days, they get another round of exceed and another round of iron when we castrate. Um, so that gets marked here, and then we have the service sire and when they were due, and then who the sire was out of. And then over here we keep track of the um, antibiotic, um, the pain medicine and the oxytocin that we give the babies or the mother when she farrows, um, and then if we have to retreat her um, if she has a dis or an infection or something after having birth. So we keep track of every time the sow gets a shot and every time the babies get shot. So in each farrowing crate, we also have a heat lamp for the baby pigs. Um, we use rubber mats to go underneath of the heat lamp. Um, you need to you know keep the heat lamp up off the ground so the babies can't get into it. And then the height of it, you can be determined on the baby pigs. Um, if the, if you got it too low to the ground and the babies aren't laying right underneath the heat lamp, you can lift it up. Or if it's too high and they're kind of piling up underneath of it for the extra heat, then you can lower it down a little bit. That can also be determined on the actual temperature in the room um, to make it more comfortable for the baby pigs. The baby pigs need to have a warmer surface than the sows, so that's what we use the heat lamp for. If the sows want a little bit cooler in the room, so we try to keep the room as cool as we can, yet keep the draft and the, the heat onto the baby pigs. So in our farrowing house, we have an automated feed system. It comes in from the feed bin outside and really loops all the way around. It goes to each, each sow has their own feed uh, tube on here. And then we start about at two pounds twice a day. Um, and it's all adjustable right here. So when they, hit, when they move into the farrowing house, 
Um, we start out there and then we slowly increase them after they farrow to get as much feed of them as we can to so get more milk production out of the sow. Um, they have their own uh, feeder here and then the sows have uh, full range uh, of water, fresh water supply at all times. And then on our farrowing stalls, we also have an extra water down at the bottom for the baby pigs to drink out of. We like to move our sows into the farrowing house about three, two to three days before they're due. Um, we usually do it in large groups, so some in here are a little bit longer. Uh, they're in here five days before they farrow. Um, we like them to get in here and get acclimated to the environment, um, and then also to get them switched over to our lactation feed. Um, our lactation feed has a laxative in it, and um, that's a, a stool softener to help um, empty out the pipes. That way the babies have more room to come out when they're um, ready to be born.